if you tend to be uncertain like me and flag a lot of questions, um, it is a nice way to help keep yourself a little more focused. Nicole, welcome back to the MCAT podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How about you? I am amazing. I'm excited to jump into our last part of the ChemPhys section for the Blueprint MCAT Diagnostic, Ooh. where we, we have a couple discrete questions to finish up with and see if I can redeem myself. I've been struggling <laughs> lately. Uh, see if I can redeem myself and hopefully uh, finish out the ChemPhys section strong, at least for the diagnostic. Um, and a, just a reminder, everyone can get access to this diagnostic by going to blueprintmcat.com and signing up for a free account. So, um, Nicole, for you, when you're transitioning between a passage and you kind of know that the discretes are coming up next, is there any sort of kind of mental gymnastics that you do to go, okay, I'm done reading a passage for a minute. I can just answer some questions. Honestly, for me, I take a little bit of a deep breath because I think passages can be really intimidating because you never quite know what you're going to get. I think sometimes, you know, discretes are discrete, right? They rely on content knowledge. So sometimes, even though there's certainly reasoning and um, critical thinking involved in the discrete questions, I think for me and my prep, at least, I think they felt more a little more approachable and easy. And especially when you're at the end of a section like this, you know, and you're in that home stretch, you only have three questions left. Um, I think it's sometimes a more enjoyable place to be than at the first car's passage. Yes. Um, <laughs> of a section, which we'll, we'll be getting to. Yes, well. the cars. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and jump in uh, to our question. Uh, I'll start with question 28, and I'll let you do the next one. So, which of the following properties explains why sound wave velocity increases as it travels from air to a liquid medium at the same temperature? All right. So, I think... I think I knew this because um, I've seen uh, similar types of questions with sound waves and going through mm -hmm. solid stuff and going through liquid mediums versus air. There's just more stuff to bounce around the air and it, it can it can propagate faster, um, which I think is just the, the density of the medium, if, if I'm remembering correctly. So, unfortunately... No! You fell for the trap that the majority of students fall for on this question because um, you you are right that the dense so the density of a medium does affect the speed of propagation. However, there is an answer choice here that actually affects that speed even more, and it's actually the bulk modulus of the medium. So this is a really tricky question, I think, oh, because. Man. Both of these, it's one of those where what is it, you really have to pay attention to which you know which of the following is the best answer. Mm -hmm. um, and so, if you don't know what bulk modulus is, it's basically um, a term for the stiffness of a medium. Um, so, if you're an equation person, you like to see the math behind it. The actual equation for sound velocity is given by v equals the square root of k over density, and that k is the coefficient of stiffness. Um, and so your speed of sound is going to increase with your stiffness. Um, and so solids are more stiff than liquids, as we know from just our experience and as well. And then liquids are more solid than gases. Um, and so when we're comparing these solids to gases, the density in that equation is going to have a smaller effect than stiffness because the extent to which a solid is more stiff than a gas, basically there's a larger difference in the stiffness than there is in the density. So this is definitely a tricky question. Um, for Lisa, not only on just you know, being able to plug and chug in that equation, but having some of the conceptual understanding behind it. All right. Question 29. You can read this one. All right. So modern MRI machines use electricity to generate their magnetic fields inside a circular chamber instead of using permanent magnets. Which of the following would not increase the strength of the MRI field? What are you thinking here, Dr. Gray? What are you, what are you focusing on in this question? Well, let's, let's read the answer choices for our, our oh, yes. uh, podcast for listeners. Our listeners. Okay, so your options are going to be increased radius of the MRI chamber, increased power supplied to the MRI machine, decreased resistance of the MRI machine or increased current through the MRI machine? So increased radius of the MRI, ch MRI chamber. So I, 
No, <laughs> at least I think I know. Uh, the, the 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 blueprint often, or the MCAT often tells me uh, I don't know what I what I think I know. Um, I I know that uh, we have some uh, the the stronger MRI machines that are out there, especially the experimental ones, have very narrow openings. They're they're very small radius, very small diameter. Um, and that's one of the ways that they increase the strength of that MRI magnet. And so answer choice A to me is the opposite of that. Uh, so I would go with that without really even thinking about the other stuff, just from some applied kind of real world knowledge that I have. Yes, and you would be correct. So A, increase the radius of the MRI chamber is going to be our correct answer. And so I said, if you want to think about, if you have that conceptual understanding, that's really great. Um, you know, I think with ChemVis in particular, I know I certainly can get a little bogged down in equations. I'm not the biggest math fan. I don't love equations. So whenever I can have some conceptual understanding to double check what I'm thinking about, I love that. So that's mm -hmm. great. Um, but if you are thinking about the equation, um, it's going to be the equation for the magnetic field generated at the center of a loop circuit, right? Because we're specifically told that is given by B equals the permeability of free space that is kind of like um, mu sub O I, um, which is current over two times radius. And so if we increase that radius, right, we're increasing our diameter. So we're going to make the overall magnetic field strength smaller. And if you went through the rest of these answer choices, so to remind you, that's increased power, decreased resistance, or increased current. Those are all either directly saying increased current, essentially, um, yeah. when you look at, um, you know, V equals IR. And so that would be increasing that um, I component that was on the top of our equation for the magnetic field strength. And so none of those would work. And so this is actually... Kind of basically base the same as actually which of the following would decrease the field strength or not increase it. Yeah. So our answer also could have been didn't change. Um, mm -hmm. but in this case, it was decrease. All right. Got one. I finally I finally got <laughs> one right. Uh, although this one, as soon as we flip to it, I go, uh-oh, I'm definitely not doing well here. Uh, question 30. The two steps of the vitamin D synthesis are summarized below. Um it seems like th the vitamin D synthesis, like there should be no the there. Um, it's a little typo. Anyway, step one, seven dehydrocholesterol uh, plus UV light it leads to pre-vitamin D3 with a delta G of negative uh, 134 kilojoules per mole. And then step two, pre-vitamin D3, which leads to uh, coal calciferol. Uh, vitamin D with a delta G of 58 kilojoules per mole. Um, what is the delta G for vitamin D synthesis? <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it seems like you go, oh, just what's negative 134 plus 58? Is that a symbol? <laughs> I don't yeah, know. yeah, you're right. Yeah, so it'd be negative. That's going to turn out to be negative seventy six yeah. kilojoules per mole. So I think, at least for me, this is maybe a little bit friendlier question than our previous two. Yeah, yeah. and so this is like you know to remind to remind our listeners, right? We're basically given two reactions, saying that uh, that our step one and step two of a larger overall reaction. We're given the delta G's. What's the overall delta G's? And you just add them all together, um, and you would be do the same given enthalpy values here and they're asking what's the overall enthalpy you're always just going to add those together so that's going to get us negative 134 plus 58 goes to negative 76 kilojoules per mole i want to know what do you have the answers in front of you like what percentage of students get this one wrong or right i do have that yeah so 82.6 percent of students get this one correct what's the most common second answer choice um d by a little bit. Interesting. Yeah. I think the, uh, yeah, I think for the other, and the other answer choices aren't too, there isn't too much of a favorite second choice. So I think yeah. this was, you know, either they tried to, you know, if you tried to subtract, of course, you know, that might do something. Or if you thought, you know, you had to minus a negative, you know, to get you to that positive yeah. 192. But yeah, I think students overall do pretty well on this question. So that that <laughs> goes to show you, uh, and it's kind of a good segue into our next section, which is the car section. It goes to show you that 
Um, just because something looks scary doesn't mean it is. So yeah, sometimes sometimes there'll be questions that are easy for you, and you just gotta you know you gotta take those, take your extra seconds where you can. Um, yeah, so I think, and that's also a very common question type. I feel like there's usually like one of those kind of questions on ChemViz, and I, I, when I see those, I'm like, yes, that's one. <laughs> I know how to. I can add. I'm can. I know I can add. So easy points, <laughs> easy points. We love it. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, kind of leading to um, the the question I asked earlier. Uh, at the beginning, when you're when you're starting this section, you're like, okay, I'm I'm switching to some discretes. I take a breath. You, when you know you're at the end of a section, um, maybe you've flagged some questions, uh, wh whatever that may be. You have a couple minutes left. What do you recommend students do if they have a little bit of time left in a section, and maybe they flag some because they didn't know? Uh, what do you recommend students do at the end of a section? Yeah, so I think one is to sit back, take five seconds and take like two deep breaths. You just you just got through a whole section. It was probably a little tiring. It was probably a little difficult. Um, and I think those, you know, those five seconds are almost never going to make a difference um, in something, you know, obviously if you, as long this is assuming you finish early. Mm. Um, so take a couple of deep breaths. And then if you are a person who just flags questions, I would just go back. There's a, if you don't know on your navigation page, there's a function to all like only review your flagged. Mm. And so it will directly take you through your flagged questions, which is really nice. Save you some time clicking through. I actually, in my prep, I do, uh, I did kind of like a tiered system of which questions I wanted to go back to because I tend to be a pretty, um, a pretty, what's the word, liberal flagger. Um, and so I would actually on my tests, on my little board booklet. So if you don't know, you get basically a uh, kind of fancy, almost paper-like version of a dry erase uh, board and a little pen that goes along with it. So as I was going through, I actually tend to write down questions mm -hmm. um, if they, that I want to review first. So that usually ends up being maybe like three to five questions out of perhaps, you know, 10 flagged overall out of a section for me. Um, and so I would go back to those first and then go back to my flagged. Um, it's certainly not something you have to do if you like, if you tend to be uncertain like me and flag a lot of questions, um, it is a nice way to help keep yourself a little more focused. Um, so that's something that's where I would go next is take a deep breath and then go through your flags in whatever order you do them. <laughs>